That brings us to support vector machines. So here is the objective function that we're going to uh, work with. Uh, this objective corresponds to what we would call a support vector machine. Intuitively, we'll make more sense of the name uh, later. And we'll also show why this objective function should uh, help us reach our goal of finding the max margin hyperplane. But for now, let's just look at the uh, optimization program that we're trying to solve. Uh, we're going to assume that we have n linearly separable points uh, labeled data pairs x, i, y, i, where x, i is in R, D, and uh, y, i is a label, a binary label. Uh, it's either plus 1 or minus 1. So we're doing binary classification here. And uh, what we want to do is we want to minimize over both w, uh, the, re the regression coefficient vector w, that's our classifier that defines the angle of the hyperplane, and w naught, which defines the shift of the hyperplane, of the uh, squared magnitude of w times divided by 2. So this is just usually done for mathematical conven uh, convenience. Subject to, and here's the important part, these constraints subject to the product of yi with xi transpose w plus w naught is greater than or equal to 1. So what does this mean? Remember with a linear classifier that we take the sign of this function to be the predicted label of observation xi. And so if this is, if the sign of this thing is positive then we predict that it's plus 1. If it's negative, we predict that the label is minus 1. And we want to get the label right. Yi is the ground truth. So this product of the, the label, the sign, either minus 1 or plus 1, times the sign of this uh, function will always be positive if we predict correctly. So if it's a negative labeled point, and we predict it to be negative by this thing having a negative sign, then their product will be positive. And similarly, if, they're, if the label is positive, uh, plus 1, and we predict it to be plus 1 because this is positive, then again, it's, uh, the product is positive. So the sign of this thing is going to be positive if our linear classifier makes a correct predic prediction. And for convenience, we're going to, uh, for mathematical reasons, we're just going to say that this is greater than or equal to 1 instead of 0. Uh, notice that if, if we have a hyperplane that uh, exactly separates two classes with no points on the boundary, we can simply scale w so that this is always true. So it isn't clear from this objective function why Binding the minimum L2 vector w such that we correctly classify all of our data points returns the max margin hyperplane. Obviously, if we find uh, the w, a vector w that satisfies this, we will find a, li a separable hi uh, a hyperplane that separates our two classes because of this constraint. Satisfying this constraint means that we've found a classifier that can classify per perfectly our data set. But why finding a vector w that has the minimum L2 norm subject to this constraint? Why does that one perfectly, uh, why does that one correspond to the max margin classifier? So that's what we're going to try to develop the intuition uh, uh, on in the subsequent part of this lecture. So why don't we first skip to the end, develop some intuition, and then come back and look at more detail, uh, in more detail, what the objective function that we discussed on the previous slide is doing. So can we intuitively say what the max margin hyperplane should look like? And so right now, this is mostly intuition. We're not going to give a rigorous proof that the max margin hyperplane should satisfy uh, this, this requirement. Um, but to facilitate the intuitions, uh, what should the max margin hyperplane look like so intuitively, uh, what we can think of as going on is 
we can take the data in both of the classes and construct their respective convex hulls. So all of the data in class one will, uh, will define a convex hull like this. So this is the same data set that we've been looking at on the previous slides. And all of the data in class minus one would define this convex hull. Then what we would want to search for is we would want to find the closest line that connects the two convex hulls. So think of the two convex hulls being connected by uh, a rope. For example, we could connect this point on the convex hull with this point on the convex hull, like this. And that rope has a certain distance to it. To, to, uh, if, if we pull it tightly, there's a certain length uh, of this rope that's connecting these two convex hulls. And now we want to reduce the length of that rope until we can't reduce it anymore. So we want to keep pulling these two points, this rope together, until we get to this point here and this point here, at which point we can't connect these two convex hulls with a shorter length rope. So that's what it means to say that the, the two points within the respective convex hulls that are closest together. Then we would want to define the hyperplane that is perpendicular to this rope and is exactly in the middle uh, of, of the rope. So the rope is defining uh, the rope is defining the closest point between the convex hulls, and then that lets us define the max margin hyperplane to be the uh, hyperplane that's perpendicular to the rope and exactly in the middle. Okay, <coughs> so if we take for granted that that's satisfying that uh, that constraint defines the max margin hyperplane for us, then mathematically what we can say is first that all we need to know is the left and the right point, the two points on the convex hull. Given those two points, we have everything that we need to be able to define the max margin hyperplane. So how can we find these two points? Mathematically what we're saying is if we let the set S1 contain all of the data in class plus one, and the set S0 uh, contain all of the data in class minus one, what we're looking for is two probability vectors, alpha one, that is the length equal to the number of points in S1, and alpha zero, that's the length equal to the number of points in S0, such that we minimize the distance between these two vectors. Notice that this vector, by the definition of the convex hull, is a point in the convex hull of S1. We're taking all of the data in the plus one class and then averaging it in some way to get a point in the convex hull of class S of the first class. And this is a point in the convex hull of the minus one class. We take all of the data in the minus one class, we average it according to the vector alpha naught, that gives us some point in this convex hull. This, this point, some point in here corresponds to, the, to this function. Some point in here or along the boundary corresponds to this function. And therefore, the distance, the L2 distance between those two points is the distance between some point in the convex hull of class 1 and the, some point in the convex hull of class minus 1. By now trying to minimize this thing, we're trying to find the points in the respective convex hulls that are the closest together. So in a sense, in order to find the max margin hyperplane, all we need to do is find a vector alpha 1 and alpha naught that minimizes this function. OK, so that's kind of. I. I I went to the end first because that's kind of what we're looking out for. When we manipulate this uh, SVM objective function uh, and keep you know, working with it, we want to ultimately end up at a place where we realize that what we're ultimately trying to find, what we're ultimately trying to do by optimizing that uh, function is find a vector alpha 1 and alpha naught that minimizes uh, this.